Hello and welcome back to the Irish Tennis Updates podcast. My name is Adam, your host. Welcome to this really special episode. It is talking all about Enjoy Tennis. I hope in the future to do uh, many more episodes focusing on Enjoy Tennis, perhaps talking to, to players and so on. But where better to start than talking to the founder of Enjoy Tennis, Liam O'Donoghue. During this chat, uh, Liam gives a brilliant insight into Enjoy Tennis, what Enjoy Tennis does, what it offers to everyone involved and, and the impact that it does have on people. In terms of my own personal experience with, with Enjoy Tennis, I've been involved for a while with uh, wheelchair tennis for, for junior players in, in my own club of, of Greystones and also with intellectual uh, for, for tennis sessions for adults with intellectual disabilities. So those are a couple of my my experiences, and I've I've got I've got to see the the impact that it, that enjoy tennis sessions can can have uh, firsthand. And I guess a a big shout out to to Alan from Greystones for uh, who's who's organises all the wheelchair tennis, and also to Diane in Greystones who who does a lot of work with the the intellectual disability uh, tennis as well. So those guys are really really great at all their involvement in enjoy tennis as well. So here we go uh, with this chat with Liam. Um, I think you'll you'll really enjoy this. There's there's a there's a lot in here, and I just started by asking Liam what Enjoy Tennis is and how it all started. Here we go. Okay, so the story really is that about five years or so ago, we realised that people with disabilities in Ireland didn't have the opportunity to play tennis, and that started what became the Enjoy Tennis program. And really, it's as simple as saying, look, there are, you know, 15% of the population have a disability. Uh, and we want to make it tennis our sport that we're all passionate about. And we know the benefits of, you know, you know how you feel when you come off court, having had a good game, when you're on court, the slagging, the tennis, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanted to share that with, uh, with all of the community, I suppose. Um, and we now, you know, it's gone from just a very small number of people uh, five years ago to now we have 1200 players in 80 clubs around Ireland um, and uh, yeah so it's going pretty well. Yeah so obviously you mentioned about five years ago is when stuff kind of started off so how since like how did kind of you start building traction and getting more and more people involved and like how, how was that initial kind of stage of, of building it from the start? Um, so I suppose we were we started as an experiment and then when you saw uh, the impact it had we kind of said look this is not so you know we, we have to uh, scale this you know we have to bring this so there was a very strong push we felt to just uh, get it around and i suppose we we did it by forming relationships with the big service providers so with saint michael's house with carmona etc um, and with the uh, clubs um, and uh, uh, yeah, I suppose you shared it by, you see, it, it works so well uh, and it's so consistent. Like you can go to any Enjoy Tennis session around the country and you'll probably find the same thing going on. You know, the smiles are bigger, the crack is louder, uh, the coach is enjoying it. So all you, to some extent, now it wasn't quite as easy as this, but to some extent, all you had to say to a new club was, why don't you come along to Glenageary and see Paul Casey in action? You know, why didn't you go out to, to, to Shank Hill and see Derek Healy in action? Why didn't you come to Castle Bar or as well in Cork? One of the things early on was that we did want it to be an All-Ireland programme, mm. you know, so it wasn't a question of just starting it in Dublin or in Leinster. So one of the first clubs was um, uh, Castle Bar, Sunday's Well, Wexford Boat Club, um, and it's course then grown significantly in, in Ulster sub so places like CAYMS and, uh, and Windsor. So it's largely by by that, you know, clubs learning from each other, kind of coaches getting to see it in action. Um, and then the service providers, you know, the reaction was very positive. So that helped, you know, we started with one St. Michael's House group and we now have I think seven from different day services around that. Yeah, yeah, and and in terms of the kind of disabilities that, that are catered for, I know there's a kind of I guess a combination of, of physical and, and intellectual. So like, how was that early on, and how how has that kind of increased uh, as it's gone on? Yeah, so we started with people with an intellectual disability, uh, so yeah, conditions like Down syndrome, for example, 
Um, and that's still the largest group of players that we have. But over the couple of years, it, it extended to people uh, with autism, uh, then uh, wheelchair users, uh, and I know you're involved in the group in, in Greystones. And I've seen yourself and Gareth hitting, Gareth Green hitting hard balls to each other, uh, and the kids watching you. Um, that was a great day. I could just see the look. And th these are our junior, uh, for our listeners, these are the, these are the juniors that play in, uh, in Greystones. Uh, so Adam and Gareth Green, who's our number one wheelchair tennis player, were hitting. And I could just see the looks on the, the faces. They're thinking, I can do that. Those guys can do that. When I grow up, I'm going to be like them. You know? So wheelchair was next. Uh, we had some smaller groups like cerebral palsy, some deaf players. And then one of the big steps forward was we discovered blind tennis. Um, so that's in there. And we do quite a lot with the National Rehabilitation Hospital in Dublin. So people with spinal injuries and people with acquired brain injuries. Uh, so we work to two of our coaches, Derek Healy from Shank Hill and Leslie Halloran, would go into the hospital every week for a couple of hours and coach the players as part of their rehab. And then when they leave, uh, they have the opportunity to continue their tennis uh, as part of their, their life. So, um, yeah, so it's so in total now there are nine disabilities, um, but we never set out to grow it, <laughs> it kind of just happened to some extent, you know. Um, and one of the things you learn is that it doesn't matter how profound the disability is, you know, you can find a way for players to get fun out of what they do, yeah. Um, and that's been the big uh, that can be kind of somebody with quite profound learning difficulties or somebody who may be quadriplegic and, and, and you know great difficulty in a chair etc so um yeah that's been a it's been our learning along the way so yeah and obviously as you mentioned i have kind of been involved in in with the wheelchair stuff in Greystones, and, and obviously that that's kind of with with kids and uh, but i'm interested in in what because i know there's a lot of adult stuff so what's kind of the breakdown for for junior or adult players that, that take part in this stuff yeah it's it's mostly uh, like I'd say 85 to 90 percent up to now have been adults um, and uh, it's because the whole program has kind of grown organically we never set out to have an adults program per se it's probably just the way it evolved but last year um, we did start to work with the uh, special schools and the special schools association um, and I think we would kind of go when we all get back on court we'll go that uh, more um, so there are very some very kind of strong uh, school groups. There's a group in Rahini called Foxfield, which is uh, for children with autism. Uh, there's a group in Wexford uh, from Our Lady of Fatima School down there. So it's certainly, uh, and of course the great thing, and there's actually a junior group, two junior classes that play in St. Joseph's, which is a blind school in Drumcondra. And it's great because you see 10 year olds, you know, blind vision impaired 10 year olds hidden and you know they're very athletic some of them so they will grow up to be it's a challenge to be on the irish blind team mm -hmm. just like their sighted counterparts you know so it's all of the reasons that for for mains you know for for, for for tennis for people without disabilities the whole transition from juniors into performance etc the same applies to people with disabilities yeah yeah and, and i just want to to ask as well i guess you kind of touched on this earlier, but I guess this, the, the big benefits that this does offer to everyone who takes part, I guess, juniors and adults, like what, what, what do you see as kind of some of the biggest impacts and benefits this has on, on people that take part? Yeah, so the feedback you get from our partners, the, so the service providers, the people who provide services to our players, they pretty consistently talk about, um, you know, a really important basic thing, which is activity. So physical fitness. Um, physical activity, you know, in a structured weekly or bi-weekly basis. So, so that's one. Um, two is fun, you know, so there's an enjoyment bit. And, and, you know, for people, everybody has their ups and downs. If you've got a disability, then it's just sometimes for some people, it's that bit harder. Um, so, you know, the anxiety, etc., etc. So it, there's a kind of relief to that. There's a kind of the fun and the crack that, that, that they get. Um, there's a social inclusion thing, uh, which by which I mean people with disabilities can be at one remove from the community they live in. So now if you've got somebody, you know, walking along the street in, in, in Casabar and uh, maybe goes out to the roundabouts and sees the club, and that's his club, 
So for the first time, for the first time, sometimes it's the a part of the community like that that they are part of, and that's you know the guys will all say that's very important. Um, there's a interaction with uh, you know like any other sport, people they make friends, they meet new people. Finally, there's a confidence thing. So just again, like you, if you acquire a new skill, so you see that confidence uh, coming. And sometimes you get the service providers say, you know, Oshin is now has started to engage with his coach uh, on court more than we would ever have thought. And you know what? We've started to see some of that behavior now translating off court into his wider yeah. way that he interacts. And that can be quite humbling, actually, when you when that happens, you know. So, um, so yeah, it's a combination of all of that. It also has a you know, an impact on, the, on our clubs and as us as people, because, you know, I, I know certainly the first blind person, to be honest, I spoke to was in connection with tennis. So yeah. you just don't have that kind of contact, you know. Now, if you take a club like uh, Shank Hill, has whatever it is, eight or nine blind members. Uh, three or four years ago, that was amazing. Guess what? And now it's kind of normal. You know, it's, there's no fuss about it. Uh, the same Gareth that you know is on the executive committee in Shank Hill. No big deal. Just that, you know, he happens to be in a chair. Um, so that's uh, so it impacts on the players and, and it does have an impact on the on the clubs, we think, as well. Yeah, no, I was really interested to kind of touch on that as well in terms of the impact that it has on, on the, the clubs involved, the coaches involved, and the, you know, the, the community as well. It's, you know, it's not just the, the players protecting themselves, it is such a has, has benefits for everyone. Yeah, you'll get, um, you know, an important part of the program and anybody who's listening, you know, if they're interested, is the kind of club volunteers. So the model typically is if you come to Shankill on a Saturday morning, you'll find a couple of coaches working, you'll have whatever it is, 15 players, and you'll have four or five club members who are volunteering. So it has an impact on, 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 on those guys as, uh, as individuals. Uh, certainly that's fair. Uh, that's for sure. And from the coach's point of view, it's um, well, it's described as a number of different things, Adam. It's described as, you know, giving something back. Yeah. Uh, it is, prof- some of them would say it's a professionally, it's a stretch. You know, so you can be a very experienced mainstream coach, but learning how to, to teach, for example, wheelchair mobility skills to a wheelchair player on top of everything, hitting, hitting like Mr. Green does a pretty ferocious uh, top spin backhand. Well, that's very different to a, an able bodied backhand. Um, so there's that kind of stretch. Um, and, you know, you may have heard it, but some of the quotes is not unusual actually for coaches to say something like it's one of the best coaching hours of my week. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they might be doing whatever it is, 30 hours a week or 40 hours a week, but the one or two that they do for, for with the guys with a disability kind of can stand out there. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, from the, experience that I do have with it I definitely would agree with that that it's just such a, a different experience to other kind of groups and it's just you know it's so great to, to, to see kind of how much you know they all kind of enjoy it and it you know, you know you hear of all the impacts but you know seeing it on, on a case-by-case basis almost you know it's it's so different to hearing 1200 players around the country but seeing yes. you know yes. five players in the group right now and kind of seeing it it's just it, there's something special about that yeah absolutely just want to ask as well, I guess, in the in the five years or so that it has been going on, are there any kind of those moments that kind of stand out for you of, of kind of really seeing the impact that it's having and kind of any of those moments that really stand out to you? Well, the moment that kind of still makes the hairs kind of stand up on the back of our neck was the kind of uh, back in 2018, Ireland hosted the World Blind Tennis Championships. Uh, and that was, you know, 18 or 20 countries competing over a week. Um, Ireland coming third in the medals table um, and the boys started this impromptu uh, Ireland's call uh, song, you know, and it was just, you know, you, uh, we'll all, anybody who's in the, the indoor centre that day will, uh, will remember it, you know. Um, then you just, a lot of it then, Adam, is just individual stuff, you know, I met a, a girl uh, during lockdown in, in a garden centre somewhere and she just was um, telling her mum, this is this is a joy tennis, and her face just lit up, literally lit up, just remembering. And 
you know, when can I get back to it and I miss it and so on. So, so you can see the impact. Um, and I suppose the most, um, you then have situations where, um, you know, you, you get a teacher telling you about, uh, so there's a, a school in Prosperous um, and uh, the teacher there uh, talked actually at the Enjoy Tennis Conference last year. And she has kind of a group of quite profoundly um, disabled players. Uh, and she was talking about the impact on them. So they're the kind of things that stand out. Yeah, yeah. And I guess that kind of brings me on. You mentioned there the, the World Blind Tennis Championships that were held in, in Shankill a couple of years ago. And I just wanted to ask about that, I guess, how that came about and, and came to be held in Ireland and, and just your overall kind of experience of, of those few days that it was on for. Yeah, so we had brought a team for the first time to the previous year's championships that were in Spain, uh, in Alicante. And that was just a, a magical week. You know, you had people you know, on the Irish team who were, in some cases, certainly would have been their first ever international uh, competition. Uh, and, you know, they were in Spain without their guide dog. Uh, and they were in the hot house that everybody who's represented the country on a national basis recognized the week. And just the sheer guts that they put into getting through that week really well um, and the fun that they got. And I could see that, that what that championship was doing was building a, commu a worldwide community um, that our guys were part of. So, you know, the players from, there was Ono, the number one uh, player from Japan. There was the Australian bunch and our guys, and I just thought, yeah, this is pretty good. Let's see if we can bring it to, to Ireland. And I suppose like everybody who's brought something to Ireland in the past, it's always a good proposition. Would you like to come to Ireland for a week? <laughs> so we got, and it went really well. I mean, there were, I don't know, we had something like a hundred volunteers who supported the program, you know, and it was just, uh, and they're still famous actually, you know, there was on a Zoom call with their executive committee two, three weeks ago. And again, somebody was saying, well, you know, the championships next year will be in Italy. Now, can they get volunteers like Ireland did? You know, yeah. So that was, that was great. Yeah. And I, I actually got to go along one of the days that it was on. And I was, I was I went, right. to, went into St. Kale and I got to see us. And uh, yeah, no, it, was, it was amazing, I guess, seeing you know, the, the level of tennis that there is um, for, for those blind players. And I think it was, it was one, of the, you know, one of the best things I've, I've, I've seen in tennis, definitely. Like, it, was, it was an amazing yeah. thing to be yeah. there. It was, yeah. yeah, that's great. Something so, for the listeners' point of view, once we get open again, you know, it'll be running in in St. Hill on Saturdays and then in, in you know, in, also in Dundalk and in Galway and various places. So, anybody who wants to come and come along to see it in action or maybe to volunteer, you know, bring your racket and, and, and get involved and meet the people, absolutely, so, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 what does the, the kind of the future look like for Enjoy Tennis in terms of? keep plans to, to keep growing or how do you kind of and I guess kind of COVID aside how do you see uh things going in the future yeah I think it's probably more of the same you know it's trying to grow it uh trying to support the clubs that have started it so um uh, and um I think we're gonna we we'll look to uh help the players to integrate into the clubs you know so your juniors in in Greystones you know how can they become, how can they be interested in and encourage them to become members of the club? Yeah. Uh, can they, we widen their experience to, could they join in your broader junior coaching? Yeah. So, you know, could, could you have six juniors and, and two wheelchair juniors? Um, I think that's, uh, that's uh, important. Um, and then there are a couple of, you know, newish disabilities, I suppose, that we had started to work with before COVID. So there are a couple of dementia groups, groups like one in CIYMS in Belfast and one in Schenkel. Um, and again, that's, you know, I would never have thought starting out that that would be it, but it's, uh, so it really does offer a lot to all players, all ages. Um, and tennis as a sport, you know, does that from four to 94, so. Yeah, and, and in terms of uh, the current time, kind of when we aren't able to be doing these sessions in person, I know that you are, uh, carrying things out online over Zoom. So could you tell me a little bit about the, the current uh, setup for, for Enjoy Tennis right now? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we called it, you know, we figured out like everybody else, what do we what do we do here a couple of months ago? Um, and the answer was to try it on, bringing it online. 
So now we have uh, we've had wheelchair tennis coaching online. We have blind tennis coaching. We have intellectual disability coaching, and actually St. Joseph's in Shankill, which is the biggest dementia care service, uh, have uh, their tennis online as well. Um, and that sounds a bit, uh, you know, could we really do this? Um, but, you know, you connect people, they have the same kind of crack and slagging as they do if they're on court. Uh, they give the coach a hard time, just like they would. Uh, if, if I turn up, I tend to get a hard time as well. Uh, and they do then, you know, kind of physical activity, uh, coordination, some stretching, and then they do some racket work. Yeah. Um, and it's surprising what could be done. I mean, I saw a, a wheelchair coaching session that Mark Bullock ran, um, and he they were talking about the serve, and it was as technical. The guys were in the chairs, you know, and it was as technical in terms of the toss and the body angle and the use of the tummy muscles and. Uh, I mean, the only thing they didn't do was actually hit the ball. So everything else, I said to Mark afterwards, everything else you, like, you could have been doing at a session in DCU, or he was over with us in Cork a year or so ago, and I would have seen exactly the same same stuff. So it's surprising. And I'm like all other walks of life, I'm pretty sure that we continue to have Zoom coaching as part of Enjoy Tennis well into the future. Yeah. You know, I guess it is. Yeah, it is amazing, I guess, how we can kind of, you know, I, I guess adapt and kind of bring these new things in that we know, probably never would have thought of before. And now, as you say, it, it might be something that will continue to add value to enjoy tennis into the future as well. So there might be a, a benefit from it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and just another kind of couple of questions for you, Liam. Um, I guess something else that I'm interested in is, I guess like, like all things, kind of a, a, an important part of this is kind of having the, the funding and, and the kind of resources to provide this as, as you'd like to and as you know, is best too. So how does that kind of work and, and what kind of things do you have going on, on on that front? Yeah, so we get great support from uh, Sport Ireland. Uh, as, the, you know, Tennis Ireland, we apply. Uh, and so we get great support from Sport Ireland. Last couple of years, we've been getting support from the HSE. Okay. Uh, and we've also been successful with the Department of Sport from the kind of sports capital uh, funding. Um, but you know, in the one sense, 1,200 is a great number, but 15% of the population is a huge number. Yeah. So yeah. we have um, five development officers on a part-time basis around the country. Uh, so we use our money uh, to have them involved and the coaches that we pay. Uh, but if, we, if I had twice as much money, like we know how to spend it really well now. So if I had twice as much money, we would have... Uh, twice or three times as much activity going on. And that's what drives us on. Um, you know, we have, uh, what, 80 clubs at the moment. There are about 200 clubs. Uh, and we're driving on to the point where we have Enjoy Tennis in, in as many as possible of those 200, if not 200 of them. Yeah, I guess you know, there's really no reason why it can't you know, be a, a lot bigger than it is now. And it's, you know, there's, a, there's a, lot, a lot of you know, potential there as well. Yeah. So if anybody listening, yes, yeah, could help find somebody that might come on board as a as a main sponsor, that would be that would be great. Um, the uh, what we I don't know if you remember it or knew of it, but we had a great uh, success two or three years ago when David Mullins and Dan O'Neill, uh, Luke from Waterford, uh, came on and did a fundraising in Fitz, and they did uh, they they broke the Guinness Book of Records for the longest ever doubles match. So mm. the four lads played for 60 hours and, and that gave us something like 20,000 that we were able to plow directly into the into the sport. So that's, yeah. Thank oh. you for giving me the opportunity to... Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I remember that that particular event well and I guess that those kind of things are what's going to be... Because, you know, as you have your kind of grants from the, the higher levels like your, your Sport Ireland, but it is almost those individual events that can have such a, a big impact as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, clubs, you know, what Enjoy Tennis does is it brings the funding for the first 10 weeks, everything. Okay. Yeah. And while we help with, you know, coach education and equipment after that, it's up to the club and the service provider. And you'll find people like local sports partnerships, local businesses, clubs themselves, the members, uh, all, uh, all contribute. Yeah, yeah. And, and just a, a final question, Liam. I, I'd like to kind of ask, everyone uh their, their favorite everyone that comes on to this their, their favorite thing 
about tennis. So I'd be interested to get your, your answer on that as well. Favorite thing about tennis? I think the crack that people have on the court, the enjoyment that it brings all of us. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. I also, I don't play so much anymore, but I used to describe myself as a retired goalkeeper. So if you can imagine playing a retired goalkeeper at the net, that was me. So yeah, we enjoy it as a sport, as technically, but I think that that uh, that's the uh, that's the wonderful thing about it, um, and the fact that it is a sport that you can play until until you're ninety four or whatever it is. Yeah, and I guess that that's the thing, enjoyment, and 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 what enjoy tennis is doing so well is I guess bringing that to a huge amount of people that otherwise couldn't have it. So that, that that's really at the the, the core of, of what you are doing as well. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think Liam, a, a huge thanks for coming on and kind of giving a, a bit of info on that. And I think it was great to hear. And it's obviously a thanks for everything that you're you're doing as well, and that everyone involved in Enjoy Tennis is doing. I think it's it's really a, an amazing thing to have. And hopefully, you can keep growing and and you know do even more do do even more stuff in in, in the future. But I think it's great to have. And just a big thanks for talking today. So also maybe a final thought, if I could, Adam, is that if anybody listening is interested. Uh, in maybe getting involved, then we have five development offices around the country. Uh, their details are on the Talents Ireland website. Yeah. So there's uh, Alwyn uh, in, in Connacht, Liz Munster, uh, Kira in South Dublin and Leinster, and Marie in North Dublin, and uh, Simon up in Ulster. So if you connect anybody who wants to, if you want to connect with them, you know, if you're a club that are interested, if you're a coach that are, that's interested, if you're a volunteer, uh, we'd love to hear from you and help us to get from that 80 clubs. So really where we're driving after Adam is if it's a tennis club, they're going to have people with disabilities playing as part of the club. Yeah, I think I think that's that's really the goal. And what I will do is I will I'll, I'll kind of leave some some contact details in the description for this so anyone listening um do oh, great perfect do do, yeah. do do get in touch and and, and reach out so yeah I'll, I'll do that so make it as easy okay. as possible and a big thanks once again to liam for his time for talking and for that fantastic insight into what enjoy tennis is i just found that to be a really yes, uplifting chat i think that what enjoy tennis has done is is really amazing and, and also just I'm, I'm really excited about what it's going to continue to do in the future and and really excited to to hopefully be involved a bit and and, and to see what uh, the future can bring for enjoy tennis as liam said at the end do feel free to get in touch with with anybody involved in it in in enjoy tennis to find out more the email addresses for those development officers that liam mentioned are, are all available on the tennis ireland website and in addition to that i will leave liam's own email in the description for this podcast so very much feel free to, to send Liam an email with any any questions about it or, or if you have any interest in getting involved in any way whatsoever, do reach out to Liam. A big thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Uh, please do consider sharing this episode if you did enjoy it. I think the, you know, there's a, a really important, a really special message in here to get around as, as far as we can. So a huge thanks for listening. Please do share if if you can. And I should also mention uh, that I am releasing this the day before we all are getting back to tennis here in Ireland. So uh, really exciting times. If you are getting back to tennis over the next week or two to come, uh, do enjoy it. I know I will. And until next time, I've been Adam and goodbye.